This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. We're going to talk a little bit about managing shoulder arthritis without surgery, what you need to know. So the non-operative management of shoulder arthritis revolves around the fact that any surgery for arthritis is purely elective, so we have a lot of time to work on non-operative methods for lessening the patient's symptoms and improving their function. One of the important steps is to modify activities, specifically avoiding those that involve heavy loads or extreme positions of the shoulder, as well as impact, for example, chopping wood. Sometimes simply just cutting back on these activities will give rise to a remarkable improvement in the comfort and function of the shoulder. Unless there's some reason to avoid them, we consider using non anti-inflammatory medications uh, in the recommended dosage. We often use uh, a, a medication like Aleve, uh, one in the morning and one in the evening. This is usually very well tolerated um, and patients need to check with their family physician to make sure that this medication is okay for them, but it can have a remarkable effect on the patient's symptoms from arthritis. Usually it's best to take the medication regularly rather than just when it becomes painful because the body seems to respond well to having a steady blood level of medications like Aleve. And then finally, we work on gentle range of motion or flexibility exercises to combat the tendency of arthritis joints to get stiff. So here's an example of some flexion stretching exercises. Here we have supine elevation, in other words, the patient's on the back using the other arm to help stretch the arm up over the head. <clears throat> this is what we call the forward lean. Patient's leaning forward, sliding the arm on the table, and again, using that as a way of helping get the arm up in flexion. And here we have the pulley, where the patient is again using the healthy arm and a pulley to stretch the arthritic shoulder up. We can also do stretching to the side in external rotation using a cane, for example, or a yardstick, where the healthy arm gently rotates the arm out to the side. Or some patients have showed us that they, if they hold on to a door handle and turn the body away from the uh, door handle, they can stretch effectively in external rotation. Then we have stretching of the back of the shoulder, which is done by a combination of three exercises. One is stretching in internal rotation, that is this direction, with the arm out to the side. Sometimes that's called a sleeper stretch. This is up the back stretching using a towel. Again, here's the healthy arm pulling the arthritic hand up. <clears throat> and then finally we have stretching and cross body adduction, pulling the arm across the front. Once flexibility is achieved, it can be helpful to start some gentle strengthening exercises. We emphasize high repetitions and low loads, starting with the patient lying on the back, pressing up to the roof with a light weight, say a, a bottle of water. And when the patient can do that easily 20 times, then the patient sits up a little bit, continues pushing straight up toward the ceiling. And then as the angle of Inclination increases, the patient again eventually reaches the point where they can do it standing. The question is, when do we think uh, the patient has worked hard enough on non-operative management to consider doing something in addition, such as uh, considering joint replacement? And our research has indicated that most patients uh, start considering joint replacement when their shoulder arthritis keeps them from doing seven or more of these functions of what we call the simple shoulder test. So this is a nice checklist for determining how severe the arthritis is and when shoulder replacement surgery may be considered. Thanks for your attention. If you'd like more information, please click on uh, the link below to our blog post.